either way it looks sick even if you don't like pokemon like i don't know that is like you might just get some pokemon fans buying it like they're like i don't know i, know, they, they, I don't care about this band <laughs> but here's some like here's a pokemon style tea. Oh. jump play the, play the fight riff play it I'm good to get going if you are. Yeah, I'm ready. <clears throat> awesome. Well, thanks so much, everyone, for tuning in. This is another episode of the Scoped Exposure Podcast. I'm super, super excited to be uh, welcoming uh, Meredith of uh, Victims onto the show. Thanks for making some some time for me today. Thanks for having me, and sorry about the wait, but <laughs> I'm here now. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it was getting close to that point where I'm like, do we need to reschedule? But uh, we're here. We're ready to rock, ready to uh, chat about some heavy music and some other things. Um, for the few folks at home who might not know who you are, because, um, you know, we're going to have listeners coming from your world and my world. So do you want to give a proper introduction of how you're known in heavy music for the folks? So I play in a heavy band called Victims. We're from Chicago, Illinois, but we're really the Chicago land area. But okay. um I'm the drummer, and I also do photos, and I've toured with a few bands, one notable band, Traders, alongside on the uh, Acacia Strain, Chelsea Grin, Spite Run. Cool. And uh, Left Behind was also on that. So, yeah. 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 Um, I think the very first I, – I think Victims has been one of those bands that I've always known about, and it's only been in the last year or so that I've actually, like, seen different things. And I think the first musical – Thing that I listened to you guys is when you did your split with uh, Falsifier because Falsifier oh, okay. is a band up here in Canada and I have uh, friends who have done photos and creative work for them so I think that was like oh okay now I actually you know can put um you know uh, music to the name per se yeah and then uh, now now there seems to be a bunch of other things that you guys are doing with the new record coming up um, which I'm excited to, to chat with you about. Um, Hell yeah. So before we get going, it's tradition here to check some bevs for the show. Oh, um, check some bevs. Yeah. <laughs> when oh, I was like, it. do you have a bev to share? <laughs> Meredith was like, I don't know what a bev is. I'm like, oh, it's it's slang. A beverage. For, for beverage. But <laughs> if I'm not drinking a, a White Claw, I'm drinking water. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. The yin and yang. We're sm smearing off ice, but you know. Yeah. Cause you okay? So here, here's another little fun fact. So you guys did that tour with Falsifier. I guess it was two, maybe even three years ago. Um, and you, yeah, 2019. 2019. That's right. Yeah, like the whole time frame of a lot of these things is all over the place. But oh you, yeah, I think you guys came up and played Calgary, which is where I'm from. But I think what happened with that show, there was like a last minute venue change, and then like things just kind of fell apart. So. I think I was supposed to come out to that because my my friends in Plead were playing, but then it was like I wasn't sure if the show was happening and this. Started, <laughs> like, I don't know if you you remember or recall. I don't of that. think we played Calgary. Okay. I think we had to drop because our guitarist had some family issues that we couldn't even do like four of the dates. I see. Our last our last date on that tour was we came back for not Thunder Bay, but some. Man, now I gotta like look at a map. I I don't remember, but I don't think we played Calgary. Oh, okay. I'm not a hundred percent on that. I'll have to ask my my friend Tyler because yeah, there was there were some things where you, now it's coming back to me like certain bands either couldn't play and then there was a a last minute venue switch or switcheroo or something like that. Um, but yeah, like I only bring that up because the um the tour. Uh, poster was like the the Smirnoff Ice esque. Uh, style. Oh wait, yeah, the false. Okay, Falsifier didn't play that show. Oh, okay. we played. Um, I, I was talking about Black Tongue. We played Canada twice that year, and I got I got them confused for some reason. <laughs> no, that's totally fine. Um, so yeah, like to bring it back to the the Bev talk. You're your big white claw fan, it sounds like. Oh yeah. What's lemon? Your... Lemon's the flavor. Lemon is the flavor of choice. Okay. Yes. That's interesting. 
Everyone hates lemon, but I hate uh my least favorite is mango by far. I, I hate really that flavor. okay. Because yes. I've 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 listened to podcasts where they had like a, a white claw kind of like taste test and people were like, Oh, give me the mango. The mango's the best. And no. You're on the opposite <laughs> side of that. Interesting. I'll I'll drink anyone but the mango and the pure. But I'd rather have the pure than the mango. <laughs> I see. Interesting. Okay. Well, um, I don't know how familiar with the show you are, but uh, we have a couple like beverage sponsors, and uh, I'm going to be checking one from our Calgary brewery that spo- sponsor sponsors us. Uh, this is their brand Ooh, new Orange Demon, Orange okay. Demon Creamsicle, Creamsicle Sour. Ooh, that sounds really good, actually. Yeah, so this just came out uh, a few weeks ago. Um, very, very limited. Uh, so the brewery is called New Level, um, and they do like all these crazy sour flavors. And I've had, a, I think, just one of these, and it is like, it's insanely good. It's like Hold definitely on. very sweet. On the seat. Two. Oh. I, now I have to get a bet. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith will be right back after these short messages. Now there's now there's just time for me to fill the episode. <laughs> yeah. I must. I had a box. Oh wait. <laughs> oh. I found something. Oh, she got something. <laughs> Tippy cow. Whoa, what is that? It's a sauce serve um, rum cream. Okay. You... I have literally drank the whole bottle one time. Oh wow. And you're just gonna <laughs> you're gonna drink that straight up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's 14%. It's not bad. That's okay. Yeah. Well, I, I got a measly six compared to you. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, cheers. Yeah, cheers to you. Stoked to be doing this. Yeah. It was, <laughs> sometimes I, I feel like I always got to follow up with people when I'm doing these podcasts of like, this is what beverage means. Like we, we started to do these things and that's why we've only been able to have people that are like, yeah, we'll send you beers and liquid death and different things because Bev's are such a big part of our show. So, Oh, nice. Yeah. Sh- no, I've seen the one episode with Adam from Orthodox and I think you did oh, yeah. one with. You did one with um, what's his face from I Am Andrew. Andrew. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I've seen both of those, and and Andrew I've known for for a minute, and I met Adam last year on their tour or two years ago. Well, no, it was last year with Spite. Mm-hmm. So <coughs> was that the um, the oh, I'm blanking on the name of that tour. The root of all evil tour, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the most badass metal tour just before the world ended. Uh, I that's that was my last show. That was I went to the Minnesota date, which is their last show of the tour. Oh, and okay. yeah, I drove out there because I'm like, this, I'm not gonna go to a show for a while. I have that feeling, and uh, <laughs> yep, <laughs> that feeling was correct. Yeah, it's funny. I was literally uh, DMing uh, like uh, Adam just like just before our call, um, just like talking about. Oh, nice. Things. So yeah, it yeah both both episodes were really really fun, and both of those bands are absolutely absolutely insanely good. Um, well, Meredith, um, I'm really stoked to be chatting with you about the show, um, or on, have you on the show? Um, this six percent is hitting already, um, but um, for <laughs> any any first time guests, I always like to get a little bit of context about how they got into playing in bands, playing heavy music. So take me way way back in time. Tell me about the first time you've heard a breakdown the first time you heard like screaming or heavy music and that will kind of start to set the stage uh for the other things that we'll chat about okay the first time i heard screaming in a song was probably a prophecy by asking alexandria unfortunately (laughs) (laughs) um not like i listen to slipknot but i don't really consider that like screaming per se like just straight up Post hardcore, I guess that's what they they were back then. Asking Alexandria, so I'm gonna give that um, maybe that and escape the fate. Okay, sure. You know, there's a little screaming in there, mm-hmm. but and the first time I heard a breakdown was probably also escape the fate. Like yeah. those those two bands were probably the the first two metal bands that had that kind of you know core sound that I listened to. Sure. Um, my first 
ever metal band that I listened to though was probably Slipknot. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think I think Slipknot kind of was that jaw dropping like imagery and sound that just like kind of stopped a lot of people in their tracks and they're like, I need to know more about this and then just kind of went down the rabbit hole of, you know, heavy music consumption you know oh a hundred percent because that was on before i forget was on guitar hero 3 yes and that was probably one of the first music games that i played um so it was like that and then raining blood by slayer and then of course like i i liked pantera and i was huge in a in a metallica well one is also on that game yeah so it's just like that game was a huge probably reason why i'm into heavy metal now (laughs) Yeah, I remember getting Guitar Hero 3 for Christmas and playing it literally like the minute we were like, all right, everyone can We unboxed it. We're like, oh, yeah, yeah time straight to play. Up. Yeah, and it was just like, it was always just like hitting that like middle thing and then your thumb would hurt, like would hurt oh, so yeah. much after three or, hours of that. Or this, like, right. I, I used the bad arthritis. I can't even play that game really now. No, I like, I dare not even try. Like, <laughs> It's just Dude. Seems like like it, it's weird, too, because I think there was like a small portion of people that came up through that and they are like, oh, like like playing guitar is actually way easier than playing guitar here. Than playing guitar here. <laughs> yeah. No. Like, guitar um, here will be like, here's this one little like riff that's pretty simple to play on the guitar once you like learn how to move your yeah around maneuver. Like that. but they're like like it's just all over the place like the <laughs> people the that fire the flames <laughs> yeah like that's actually not super hard to play on guitar in theory no. but just like i don't know some of the sometimes like whoever maps those songs for those games i don't think guitar hero really makes games anymore but they're just like how just stupid can we make this like (laughs) well i guess they made another thing i think it's called clone hero and it's even worse like people are uploading like oh new band songs to it and they're like these riffs aren't that hard because it's like open one whatever their breakdowns but then on the game it's like (laughs) i don't know it's so crazy it's just like it comes down at you and it's all the hammer on parts Mm-hmm. And it just looks like a C and you're just like, uh, but in uh, reality, like, I guess I'm like, just doing this. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And, and I think guitar hero was one of those games where everyone in their like, uh, school of friends were like, Oh, so-and-so is the best at guitar hero, but then oh, you'd yeah. go online yeah. and you'd watch the videos of people just absolutely like full comboing, you know, through the fire and the flames. Like, I don't yeah, know. I, I was okay. I was like average. Yeah. Um, I played with the controller to start. I don't oh, know why really? I did that to myself. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, okay, I could play hard on the controller. Mm. But then eventually I was like playing expert on the, the regular guitar, but I could never beat through the fire and the flames. I, I still just never going to be good enough. No, for that I one. think it would be, I think um, like right when the first solo would kind of kick in is when I would like drop. Yeah. Off. Like I'm like, yeah. oh, and then it would be over. Like, well, that's me with one. Like, I'm good <laughs> up until the second solo. The after the yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, you just see the the meter go from green like, all the way to fail. Straight up, that's too funny. Um, did you did you go through the gauntlet of like you know playing rock band with the drums and the mic and all of that as well? That's how I learned to play drums. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, pretty That's much. So uh, rock band came out in like 08, I think, mm. or 09, it's something around there. But I was at the time, I started playing guitar first, and I had like a Fender Squire, yep. but I was so bad at guitar. Like, my fingers are so tiny, and like, I never, like, I had a really bad memory remembering, like, chord placements and, and just, like, everything. Sure. So I took guitar lessons, but I just was bad. <laughs> but in our band, I played bass and I sang. As soon as that game came out, though, I'm like, oh, I could keep a t- keep time. And, like, that was the most important part, keeping right. time. Right. And eventually I got really good at, at that game. And then I bought a drum set maybe, like, a year later or something. Hmm. And it's crazy. Uh, I don't know. I really, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So I was like, guitar is not, not my strong suit. So. Yeah. Well, like even, 
I think in Rock Band 2 is when they actually had like the symbol attached. Yeah. But in the first game, it's like you just had the four pads. Um, so even like when you actually get a real kid, it, like it translates oh, a it's little a bit he- better. It, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because like doing the hi-hat like this versus like like crossing yeah, your arms. Like, like, <laughs> like, I, I, right. I get that, you know, this huge gaming company is a little limited and they're just trying to make something that will you know work for most people and send it out in masses but um yeah yeah it is cool to hear that like that game kind of like gave you the opportunity to like you know try drumming in a very small way and that like blossomed and expanded into so much more in a cheap way (laughs) (laughs) yeah 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 that's awesome um so you kind of alluded to it so um like I was listening on a podcast you did, I think earlier this year, um, Victims has been the band that you've been, like that's like the band that you've been in kind of since you started to do some of those things. Um, what It was under a name kind of prior to that. Is that when you were doing bass and vocals? Yeah, so okay. this has been the same band since we started, but we've changed names a few times. And of course, like, finally made a facebook so it was like the third name by the time we had a facebook you were facebook but, official by then <laughs> yeah and we didn't we didn't record anything it wasn't anything of that because i was i was like i think i was 15 or 16 when i first officially started a band mm-hmm. and like facebook had just kind of started around then so we weren't even old enough to start one and of course you could make one but whatever you know but <laughs> right um yeah, so we didn't have any music up. We were just jamming. And then eventually, come like 2012 is when we put out, it was like a five-track, six-track EP under like the third name at that point. But I was playing drums um, by then. Mm. So when I was playing bass and stuff, I I hate thinking about ages. I might have been 14. It's like I can't even remember anymore. Right. Like the it, it's just been a long time since I've been in this band. Right. And I'm uh I'm the sole original member at this point. So cool. got you. Yeah, like I I couldn't like I'm 28 now and I didn't even think about like all ages, like level bands, like bands who are starting in their 15 and 16, you know, they're 15 or 16 or 17 and they're not actually old enough to use different social media platforms no, to promote no. their music i yeah that that seems so uh, like buffoonery to me <laughs> well the the facebook i had i think i made it around then like 2012 right so i had i used like a fake last name mm-hmm. it was like paparazzi because they're like oh don't put your like real name or birthday so my birthday on my facebook it says i'm like 36 <laughs> and pe- people ask me i'm like uh, are you really that old? I'm like, no, no, like I'm not that old. I'm fucking, I'm 24. So, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, this joke is too funny not to like change. I it can't, back. I gotta keep it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meredith, the 36 year old playing in, in victims. The in day. victims. <laughs> yeah. And, and people are like, are you 16? It's like, that would be even more of a joke. It's like, right. think of 26 or 36. And now you think of look 16. It's yeah. like, damn, you're like average it out a little bit, like bring <laughs> yeah. it to the middle. Yeah. A li- little bit there, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. And that that's pretty interesting how, you know, I think, I think there's like two groups of people where there's been people that are in bands for like six months to a year and then jump to the next thing or be- that band breaks up and it goes on. But there is a small portion of people that seem to be in the same music project for almost the majority of their, you know, young, younger life, which is pretty, pretty crazy. Um, Cause I'm sure you've kind of felt, you know, the, the process of like writing music and like, there's such a large foundation that you've kind of set with that band and, and past members to like, I don't know, make things more refined versus like, we're starting from, from the ground up, like every single time. Yeah, uh, I kind of wish we did start from the ground up again, but uh, it was it was too late. I was too young. I didn't really know anything that we were doing, and mm. it was kind of like a learn as you go experience. Um, it's also just crazy to kind of talk about. Oh yeah, we're still a band after 
eight years, but a lot of people haven't really heard of us since 2017. Like that was, right. that was when people started to know who, who we were. Mm-hmm. And so people are like, Oh, you guys are like a new band. It's like, I mean, yeah, I'll take that. But <laughs> it's like, I've been working for, for so long, kind of just finally getting it to, to, to a point where I actually enjoy everything about it. Right. And it's like, it, it's a little more professional looking. It's a little more like, I know what I'm doing. And um, I don't know. That's what what's important. Had I been able to do it differently, I may have. But it is what it is at this point. Yeah. Well, I I do think like there 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 are a lot of bands that get um, not stuck in that trap, but like you know, you look at a band like Knock Loose, like they were grinding for years and years before anyone even gave a fuck about them. You know, and now oh, like, yeah. they're one of the the biggest bands. So. Biggest metal. Yeah, it, it's crazy. Yeah, crazy. Like, like I'm sure everyone wants to be like a band like you, you, you can't even really say it now because like COVID has really like bands have started but haven't even played shows yet. So by the time they do play their show, it's like, oh, we've actually been around for two years, but this is our first show. First you know show. Know yeah. <laughs> so like I'm sure there are people that like that, like like oh, we're a very infant level band, but you know, I, I do think it's cool to be in the same you know, project and kind of, um, like I, I think either if you're doing that or starting brand new part projects from the ground up, you're still taking all those experience from past bands and applying and bringing it with you. Yeah, absolutely. I totally agree with what you're saying. Um, yeah, when it comes to that, I just, we were finally hitting a good stride Mm -hmm. in 2019. It was like our best year. And then 2020 happened and I was like, Oh, cool. Like, I, I I still don't know what to expect for this year and next year with touring, but mm-hmm. then, you know, thankfully we got on that, the ingested run for next year, like in Europe. Oh, and okay, that's by, cool. that's like by far our biggest tour we've, we're, we've ever done. Mm-hmm. So I was like kind of happy things didn't just like combust. Right. Cause it really, it really could have, um, especially being like an independent band and stuff. So Thankful for that. Right. Well, I was definitely worried in 2020. I was like, how are we going like, to survive this? Yeah. Well, I think most most people were just, you know, trying to figure that out. Like, uh, bands aside, like, I was kind of feeling the same way because this channel largely just was only documenting bands. So, like, going to a show, filming four bands, and putting all those sets online. And then when that hard stopped and I still had content from like past shows and festivals that I was starting to trickle down, I was like, so what am I going to do to keep the content and the, you know, the overall branding going? And we had already started the podcast and then it was like, okay, well, let's just see if we can kind of increase the amount that we do this. And now it's like become almost like a like I won't even say I won't say bigger, but it's kind of come to that same scale of like people now know us from filming bands, but also from this podcast. So like when shows come back, anyone who's, you know, come here since the podcast days is almost going to be like, you film shows, too. It's like, yeah, like since day one. <laughs> but I do think that bands are like everyone in that in those first few months were like, so should we put out music like should we do anything like, you know, like it, there was so much unknown at that point. It, very confusing time. Uh, I think you did. You have Matt on this podcast as well. Matt from Boundaries. Boundaries. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. OK. I saw that episode, I think, too, then. But that band, they put out a record and went in September of 2020. And I'm sure they were freaking out. Like, I'm sure they're like, well, we just put all this effort into this album. Who knows how it's going to do? Mm-hmm. And like, they didn't even get the tour off of it, which sucks. Cause that record, I thought that was like one of my favorite ones of last year. Yeah. And um, I, I know they're going to have good things come their way, but I think it was just like, do you put out a record last year? And we didn't put out a record last year, literally for that reason. Yeah. It was just too too scary to kind of take that risk yeah well i like it's funny because i've seen like you know prepping for any guests on this podcast i'm like kind of perusing through the instagram of the band and and the person and it's always funny seeing the captions of like lp release 2020 and then it's only been like beginning of 2021 where that has started to like okay we have to start to like 
pump this out now. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like after a whole year of, hey guys, we're recording an album. Yeah. Okay, where is it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I and and I've I've said this on the podcast a couple of times, so I apologize to all the listeners who have been hearing this like three to four episodes in a in a, in a row. But it feels like to me this like 2021 feels like the year of the split. So like 2020 was like this, this weird thing where either bands were actually forced to put things out, you know, just like we're, we've been sitting on this for nine months already, but I think this year is like, okay, like I see shows coming back. So let's just do a couple songs and do it with our friends or do it with this band on the other side of the world. And I know that you guys did that falsifier, um, kind of like, EP um at the very end of 2020 so it almost like was the like I kind of lumped that in the same way of oh yeah things. yeah um yeah and and that <laughs> I I love the imagery on that with like the the Canadian the, the beaver eagle. and the American <laughs> eagle <laughs> I can only yeah. imagine what that would actually look like in the flesh like oh those, well yeah the eagle was going probably out. win but I mean <laughs> I mean yeah be beavers <laughs> You know, they, they they could be unexpected. You don't know what they're doing there look in their little beaver um den, yeah. In their Who beaver knows? dens. Like they're just like loaded up with like glocks and everything and ready to go. Like, let's go. <laughs> yeah. I got my Canadian flag, I'm ready to stab you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just like pole vaults the eagle out of the out of the sky. Um well, yeah, so um we we've talked about it a little bit as far as the origin of, of victims. Um so you guys kind of had a name change, and then you dropped the vowels of of the name. So I I thought that was kind of interesting, just kind of looking into some of the history because it was like it's an unofficial name change in a way. Um, because like going into Spotify, if you search victims spelt like you would from the dictionary, you guys don't come up. But it's almost like this thing where someone can see your logo and just like, oh, that's victims, not. V you know <laughs> yeah sometimes people are like i don't like that band because they have a dumb name and i'm like well what else are you gonna see vctms as right like that's victims i do see some bands that take the vowels out and it looks so stupid so mm -hmm. i understand where they come from but um we changed the name because we kept getting tagged by the other victims even oh, though they're from okay. stockholm They've been around for a minute, and I didn't know that. Again, the Facebook thing, There's a, that, that's where it all comes up. Right. But I didn't know they existed because when I searched victims, honestly, like, nothing came up. Mm. So, like, oh, this band name will, will work, you know? But then once we kept getting tagged by this other band, we're, oh, you guys are playing in Germany? I'm like, no, we're not playing out there. So it's like, just to be safe. We weren't even, we released that that first album. We were still like pretty, like relatively small. So I was like, you know what? We're going to drop the vowels. I just felt like it was the best move, like to actually brand as a new band mm. and not be like tied by with somebody else or somehow get in trouble. Cause I've seen like Youth Forever. Uh, if you're aware of that band, they used to be called Villains. Oh, and they yeah, had to I change that, their yeah. name because there was the villains and the in a trademark sense doesn't count as a word. So, oh, they, okay. yeah, so they had to change their whole name and they had to change it to youth. But then there was a rapper named Youth. So they had to change it again to Youth Forever. And I'm like, that I'm not having that happen to us. <laughs> right. So it's like I kind of just jumped the gun. I'm like, we should change it. And right. that's what we did. And it's worked out kind of since I think it actually looks cleaner without the vowels than yeah. with it. So. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's and I'm sure there's a, a scientific or a technical term for this, but it's like that thing where your brain will see something and it will just kind of like fill in the blanks, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, no, I, I, I think that was an interesting move. And I'm sure like, um, you know, being from Chicago, you must know the the hardcore band Buggin from there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they went through a very similar thing where like they were called Buggin Out and then someone's like, no, we're like, it always seems like any person that comes after like a, this is our band name is not in hardcore A and B, their band probably sucks. <laughs> like <laughs> the Kubacon thing, dude. Oh, with, did Kubacon do that too as well? Yeah, they had to add TX at the end of their name. Like I thought officially. just every Texas band does that now. 
Uh, I, it's kind of becoming a trend, but um, right. no, they had to legitimately, I think, change their name. Mm, okay. Because if you look at it, it's like Kublacon TX now, opposed to just Kublacon. And, and I'm like, come on, this yeah. band had like a thousand likes and uh, yeah, like fucking love that band. I, and I thought it was just like, oh, like it's almost like, oh, you want to you, you're a Texas band like you have to put TX in your Instagram and your actual band name credentials. But yeah. Yeah, it kind of it kind of worked though for them. Like you look at the logo, it's like, oh, that looks really nice. Actually, just the TX is right under yeah. like, Kublacon. So yeah, I I think that might be one of the only states that that can work. Like no true. one's yeah, no one's doing band name FL for Florida or anything. No, like no, no. <laughs> it looks a little silly. Um, yeah. So as far as sorry, my phone is acting up. Um, so yeah, you guys have been doing some things um you were mentioning uh, a little bit in the intro how um how you also do a lot of the imagery and photos and things like that and i thought that was kind of interesting uh when i was listening to I'm, I'm blanking on the podcast that you were on but you were talking about how that was like a little bit of an origin for you when it came to like going to shows like you were going there with your camera and taking photos of bands and filming sets and some of those things um how do you think like having that foundation, like kind of swayed the way that you do things on a creative basis when it comes to your band stuff. So with that, yeah, when I first started going to shows and stuff, I would film like every set, I do it for free, I would take pictures, I do this and that, like, I was kind of a shy person. So that was kind of a way whereas I can not talk to somebody and just like shoot. Yeah. But, but then eventually, because I'd like give all these bands photos and stuff, you know, they would credit me, they'd want to get to know me, whatnot, and talk to me about like filming them the next time. And um, I kind of integrated myself in the scene a little bit more. And, and um, the music thing wasn't as tight. You know, we were very bad. <laughs> I'm going to be honest, we were very bad. And so there's a lot of people like I looked up to and this and that. But being able to do photos and stuff has kind of made me appreciate content in a way that other bands didn't. Mm, yeah. And so as soon as we had some kind of financial backing, like ourselves, you know, how we had jobs, we got old enough to do that. Um, I wanted to make sure that everything we, we were doing came off a little more professional than the people around us. And P bands don't realize like content is huge. Like appropriate looking content is huge. Branding is like more than half of your band. And, um, I think because I was doing photos and stuff, I knew what I would want as a drummer. Mm. So it was kind of like vice versa, like what people wanted is what I wanted. And I don't know, it, it like all worked out in the same setting almost because yeah. you see these people like stage diving or people like jumping up with their guitar and I need to snap the photo on, on that like exact moment. Yeah. And so you kind of learn their whole set and the, and what they're playing musically. And so you know where to go. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how, um, when I get photographers, how like I tell them to kind of do it and stuff. And, and I don't know, I think it's helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that always, uh, you know, th uh, that's a lot of what I do. And then when it comes to like my band stuff, it's always that thing where like, I want people to like still throw their creative spin on it, but I kind of just have that high standard in my mind where like, I want X amount of photos like to to at least have options for the end of for sure. yes from definitely. that set um, or just you know seeing the value like a lot of people in like the hardcore space are like oh music videos are so cringy but I'm like I look at it as a way as like a way of presenting our music in another means like definitely yeah we did like <clears throat> I don't know as far as like my band is concerned like we're a pretty like straight up like kind of thrashy kind of hardcore band so like there's a lot of bands in our space that would wouldn't dare touch a music video but like we did one and we got it hosted somewhere and it has almost like twenty thousand views now so i just look nice, at that yeah. as like a way to get that out further versus like oh it needs to be this band camp link and that's the only way that people are going to engage with it it's like it's just like different ways of like you know, send your song off for a podcast to play it in between something like everything kind of like all plays a part in that, in my opinion. 
Oh, most definitely. I think when you kind of have another creative venture and you add that to what you're doing, it just makes your band that much more unique almost in a way because you're, you you kind of are ahead of the curve mm. opposed to other people that are kind of like more stuck in their ways or whatever they think is right. And then once you, like, you could be the first one to do it and then other people might follow you. Yeah. You know, that's like kind of how it works, how I've seen at least. Like mm. music videos, I do not recall all these music videos happening when I was younger. Like, I right. feel like music videos was kind of like local bands didn't have them. No. They had the band camp link and that was it. And now, you know, you see like professional grade level videos happening and coming out more often. And I think it's just making everything more presentable mm -hmm. and in a way, whereas it could even make it more marketable to people that don't even know metal that much. So yeah. I think it just, it helps. Yeah. And I think like, you know, being self-aware um like you know if you're a like a new york hardcore style style of band maybe you don't need like the super crazy i know like um my friend austin has done a couple of your music videos shirtsburg um, yeah 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 me, yeah I, lo I love austin yeah me, we we've gone to meet a couple times he's he's a very talented uh videographer uh dude but um you know maybe he doesn't need to do air, like a band of that scale like maybe that no. fit isn't there uh and, and i've mentioned this on the podcast before but there's a band um called spine and they're like this power violence band and they have a music video for one of their songs off of lov their latest album and all it is is like this drone shot and then it like pans down and then there's like a dead body like on the path and it's like the different members of the band and it kind of cuts to like the song and that's it and when I watch that, I'm like, that's such a cool, like, way of doing a music video that fits that style of music versus like the super high production, like super fast cut. But I think, I think you're, I think every band can do a music video. You just need to be self aware of like how to to produce that and going yeah. to someone within your local circle who knows um, that you have like uh, work that you can reference can help bring that to life. I think a good person to that does a lot of like hardcore music videos is like Eric Easterday. Mm -hmm. I know I'm sure you know who that is, but um, he's been doing it for so long. Um, I remember meeting him probably, probably known him for like nine years at this point, and um, he's been like busting his ass, and he's like one of the most like prominently known, yes, like photographer for photographer and videographers that I know. So. I think what he has done for even smaller bands and he just has that artistic vision, you need people like that. Right. That's that's like the best best thing you can do for your band is just have someone like hired on that just knows your sound or has worked with somebody like similar yeah. and just roll with that. Yeah, and like Eric uh, came on the podcast, like I think he was – well, I think it was around episode 54 or something. Someone can fact check that on me. Maybe a little bit fact earlier. check. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, like, even if he's doing two very similar bands, like he did a lot of the Boundaries music videos and, and videos for Chamber, very similar musical bands, but he still was able to kind of have very different feelings and vibes and styles for, for a lot of those um, those pieces. So I think... I think that just goes into the person where obviously there's going to be a little bit of a style, but if it's like, Hey, I'm, we're going for this kind of look, maybe that changes what they actually do the video on. Maybe that kind of changes the, the production style, um, to fit that. Yeah, definitely. No, I like both those, the, the, he, it wasn't the tarp. What was it? That weird texture that he used for the chamber video. Oh, which is oh it's like, um, it's not tin like, foil, but it's something like that. It's something like that, something <laughs> like tin foil. And I was like, oh, this like looks like really badass. Mm -hmm. So, like, that was cool. And then for the boundaries music video, um, the first one when he falls, or the second one when he falls into the couch, is that the second one, or is it the first one? That's the first one because I think the that one was cool too. One um is like the the white room or no? Well, no, that's the third one. The second one is that like um like not ar but like it's the animated one 
Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. See, th- yeah. this is what happens. He, <laughs> they, they're all notable, but I was right. like, which one's which? <laughs> yeah, but but obviously, like, with any music video, like, you know, you were mentioning Slipknot, and the very first Slipknot music video I saw was, like, the duality one where it's like, let's just get a bunch the house. of people to get into this house and just rock out yep. and tear this place apart. And, you know, it gets people talking, and, you know, you're not thinking of the song per se, uh, but you remember what you saw the visual yes again yeah so yeah and you guys have done a number of music videos yourself as well i think we have done like seven or eight now at this point wow okay which is kind of crazy (laughs) i i did i used to do them i used to edit them i did like crippling form and i did devil's door and i did a few other ones and then eventually we started to kind of grow so I'm like, oh, I can hire people because I can only do so much. Right. I think like I do videography, but I'm primarily like a photographer. That's kind sure. of what I like specialize in. So I'm like, I don't really want to render out in Adobe like um, Premiere For three and days wait all these hours. <laughs> yeah. I would rather just hire people. And I feel like I finally found like the group of people that I like to work with. Mm-hmm. And um so we just kind of go to the same people now. I, I did. I had, sorry, my phone, nope. stupid timer. You're good. Um, but I have found like specific people that I like to go to and I don't like to venture off anymore. Yeah. I don't know. Like uh, eventually you make this trust with people and they're just your, the people. Yeah. That yeah. They become with. like unofficial members of the band in a way. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I, th- I think that's cool. And I think you, like, the band does a very good job at, like, all visual aspects. Like, the music videos, the the merch, and the design layouts of, like, the singles as well. So, like, was that, again, a lot of the, I guess, the understanding of creative work through your photography and you just applying that to the band now? Or is there someone that you kind of specifically draw from for that? Well, <clears throat> it's kind of like... So I want Vic, I always wanted victims to kind of be for everyone in a way. Like our music, e- even now, we want to have songs that are like heavy, but also soft. And so I feel like we also do that within our merch. So we'll do like bright colors and we'll do dark colors. We'll just make it a mix. So it's like something for everyone. Mm-hmm. But as what changed uh, the way I wanted to do like merch, especially and do like addition to bright colors mm. was because all bands do is print black. I've right. noticed all, and I'm, and, and, and I, as I got older, I'm like, I'm wearing black right now, but normally I don't really wear black. Right. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to apply this. And I just, eventually you start seeing streetwear and fashion and everything just changes. So like frequently mm. that you kind of play to that strength of, like what's hot right now, what's going to maybe, you know, kind of add something to a metal band's merch. And you put it out there instead of just, here's an all black tee with our logo on it or, or whatever the case. And I don't know. The pocket design with the same thing on the back. Every band has done that. (laughs) We've done, well, we do that just because it's like every now and again, it's like, I know people still like that. Sure. So I'm like, you know what, we'll do that. But I think it was just, it's like a fashion thing. Mm-hmm. Like my style has kind of changed. So it's like just adjusting that to to the band as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think you guys do a really killer job of like, you know, like well-designed stuff. And, you know, like everyone, like if I look at my closet, it's primarily like, it's funny because I think most people in the heavy music space like a large majority of them probably had like an emo phase where everything was black but like black yeah like i'm i'm well out of that but still my entire closet is primarily black (laughs) but um you know when you're thinking like man i don't have a neon like orange shirt that's kind of cool or like that i've never seen that like teal for like a heavy band before and then you know it it's a little bit easier than just like here's another black shirt with like a certain style of design and like i think it also offering makes different people things. wanting to check it out that mm-hmm. aren't into heavy metal and they're like sure yeah what is this shirt and i don't know it could bring more like fans in too right 
Um, I saw that you had a couple, um, cause I think every band has done some kind of like rip tea, rip tea. So I was listening to that podcast and they were like, oh yeah, all the Pokemon stuff. And I'm a, like, I'm going to just tilt my laptop for you to see. Like I got a magic carp and oh, a Toto dial up here. Toto dial. Yeah. I see that. Toto is my favorite starter of all time. Um, mainly because his, uh, his, his last evolution for alligator, like when they were spelling his name this is like super pokemon nerdy so i apologize for all the listeners but there's like a care okay you got the card what is that is that a poly, a poly oh, okay sick <laughs> are you are you on the pokemon card f- fiasco that's going on in our world right now i was right before it hit because okay i went because i usually put pokemon cards in our merch <laughs> okay so i was like oh, i'm gonna go to the store and I'm going to get some packs. I went and they're like, it's all out. Like the baseball cards, everything oh, was gone. Okay. And I was like, what the hell just yeah. happened? Because I would buy boxes. Mm-hmm. Like last year, I was buying like boxes of like Pokemon cards and everything. And I always save the holographics for myself. Sure. Put them in a binder. <laughs> but <clears throat> like I give away the commons. And then I was like going to do that for this year. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I guess no dice because... <laughs> no pokemon cards yeah everyone's flipping them online for ridiculous amounts of money um that's crazy um so sorry just want to finish my thought uh we might go off on a tangent on some pokemon talk but for all for all gear is my favorite uh like max level evolution because pokemon had like a character limit for all the names and spelling for alligator um it, it was one over so it doesn't go er it just ends with r um, so I always thought that was the most wacky and ridiculous shit. And uh, I really, I got to show you this now. Okay. So keep, keep talking about free alligator, but I need <laughs> to now show you this design because it's funny that you say like <clears throat> Typhlosion and free alligator are like some of my favorite Pokemon. Mm-hmm. Um, that Tyranitar and Charizard, those are probably like my favorite of all time, but we had done a design Let's see. I have we haven't released it yet, so this is gonna be interesting. Oh, but, okay. But. Cause I know that you did the Charizard design, which I was like, whoa, this is so sick. So if there's an unreleased Pokemon design that you're gonna premiere here on the podcast, that feels about to do it. Where is it at? <laughs> I'm we, about to do it. <clears throat> we're so many like photo oh, there it is. We have so many, but oh my god. Okay, I need that. Holy I got you. I'll, I'll just send you one when we print it. But... Oh my gosh, that is so <clears throat> sick! My heart. Those are those are my like those are my favorite. And I was like, you know what? It's not like Charizard's pretty. Like everybody knows Charizard yes. and Pikachu, right? So it's like I don't know how well like people are gonna perceive this, but I'm like, either way, it looks sick. Even if you don't like Pokemon, like I don't know. That is like you might just get some Pokemon fans buying it. Like they're like, I don't know. I know. I don't care about this band, but. Here's some like here's a Pokemon style tea. Oh, okay, so a couple of Pokemon questions since we're on the topic. Uh, a, have you ever done a Nuzlocke before? I have not. Oh, okay. You know what that is, obviously, though. I I don't. I you... maybe if I saw the spelling, but okay. So it's N U Z L O C K E, and essentially what that is, it's a a certain style of playing a Pokemon game. So I like like I'm not sure how much you play the games, but like. And, and, and sorry for all the listeners, we're going to get off heavy music and talk about Pokemon for a second. But the games over the years have gotten significantly easier because the demographic uh, for Pokemon, like, largely is targeted, you know, super so like young. like, five-year-old, yeah. Yeah, so it's like, <laughs> oh, like, gone are the days of, like, trying to catch Mewtwo, which is, like, the the boss of you know yellow or red or blue and it's like i literally remember sitting in my basement spending two hours throwing ultra bowls like trying to catch it yeah yeah but now like and and there's the the scientific or not the scientific but there's like stats that show the catch rate for any box art like legendary mon is like so much higher because it's always like like the last thing that pokemon the pokemon company wants is mom's like emailing them because their child was mad because they spent that they amount of time play, trying yeah, to catch they can't play the game like, yeah. yeah like uh rcs or whatever it is so um the games have gone definitely a lot easier and the grind 
is not as hard. So nuzzle, doing a Nuzlocke is essentially, there's there's a bunch of iter iterations, but the main one is if your Pokemon dies in battle, it dies in real life and you can't use it again. So it's like this, you form this way deeper connection because like in the main games, you were just like, oh, I'll switch, kill that Mon, go to the Pokemon Center, heal up and away we go. Do but it it's again, like, yeah. I just lost my starter to a Voltorb doing self-destruct and you're just like racking your brain. So that's that's the main one. So I've done like randomized Nuzlocke so you can like encounter like the rarest Mons and like Route 2 and all these ridiculous little things. Um, I've done type locks, so it's like you can only catch a certain type of Pokemon. So th there's been oh, a bunch what? of things. So yeah, I'm I'm a big. At, I feel like, and I don't think I've ever said this on the podcast, but I feel like if we ever did like Twitch or like any gaming related content, it would just be Pokemon. <laughs> oh <man. laughs> The last the last Pokemon game I played, I think, was Pearl. Oh, okay. I'm like ninety percent. So it's been a while. I used to, I to have like Pearl. I had the mystery dungeon. Right. I did the the one on Nintendo, like sixty four, uh, Pokemon XD of Darkness. Mm -hmm. I did, uh, you know, blue, red, leaf green. Mm -hmm. I did the fire, er, fire red. All those. I did those, but then they changed. I don't know. One of the gens. I was like, these Pokemon are so. I don't know. They're not cool looking. Right. Like I feel like I really liked Pokemon because I love the way they looked. Mm -hmm. And like Palkia was like so cool in in Pearl, but I think the new generation. What, what there's like four generations now from that. Uh oh, since when you dropped yeah. off? Yeah, it's it's on like Gen eight, if anything, right now. <laughs> oh yeah. my god! And 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 I I do agree. Like I've kind of <laughs> gone through the gauntlet because like there, I think I dropped off at Root. Yeah, Ruby was kind of the last game. And then I jumped back on when they did X and Y. Black. So, oh, no, oh, X and I y, skipped, okay. I skipped Pearl and Diamond, and then I skipped Black and White. And then I jumped back on with X and Y, because that's when they did, like, the the 3D uh, um, Yeah, I saw style. that, yeah. And then I was, like, hooked. But I, I went back and played those games. Um, and, I, and I do think that there are weak forgettable mons in oh, every yeah. generation but there are some really really cool ones from gen 6 on that uh that i think would look badass on a victim shirt for sure <laughs> yeah maybe maybe i'll like explore i'll get back i think i just stopped playing the games because everybody stopped playing them mm -hmm. i think it, it it was really fun when you had people to play with you especially what what was the one when you have to walk around oh pokemon go yeah, Pokemon yeah. Go. It and kinda then Pokemon is like, Snap. Poke, like I I don't know. It kind of Pokemon Go came up and then it kind of like plummeted. And there's still like a Pokemon Go community. My brother is like really active in the Toronto Pokemon Go community. This is like really random. I was visiting them because I live in Calgary and the rest of my family lives out uh just outside of Toronto. And he was like, Oh, I'm gonna go um we're gonna do like a like a boss raid or something. And I was like, Okay, so like literally like I'm 28. I think at the time he was like 22. Like he's a young okay. kid in my opinion. And there's like grown ass adults and like with their kids. And he he like shows up and they're all like, okay, like what are we going to do? Like they like he was almost the leader of that work. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Well, that's kind of cool though. That's what I mean. It's like a community. Mm. And it made you like be active. It was just fun. Yeah. But a lot of people around here, at least by me, they don't play they don't play that anymore. They play League of Legends. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I think it was like it had this surge, drop off. And you know, Pokemon is still this cool thing, but then there was kind of this jump up when it was like, oh, I can flip a Charizard card for like ten thousand dollars or whatever it is. Um, so it's, it's like probably yeah, more it's than that actually. Oh yeah, I saw it was like a hundred thousand. I swear. That's First so edition, crazy. like 10 grade i think that's the highest 10 grade um charizard yeah i was like what i know i was like are you guys serious a hundred grand and that makes me regret i don't know where my old cards are being real but i know Same. i had it i know i had that card i think they're long gone at this point um yeah mine too yeah i i did see and this is this is very weird to say but i think the only thing in that pokemon card collecting world that i would want and i saw this randomly 
I think Justin Bieber posted this and it was like reshared, but he essentially got all the first gen mons and he like framed it like you would like see it in the Pokedex. And like, okay, that's kind of cool to see like yeah, that that is you know, all sick. the different artworks and it's like properly framed. But like he probably spent a hefty chunk of change just to like get into like get that Blastoise, get the Mewtwo. Get yeah, that but he he could afford it. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, okay, one other Pokemon question before we jump back into the other things. Um, what is the Meredith gym that you would run, and who would your team be? Oh, now I gotta like remember all that. I liked Brock. Brock was like probably my my favorite. Okay. But... So so you would have like a rock gym per se. Uh, fuck. no, I like him as a character. So oh, I see. Okay. But probably fire. Okay. Honestly, fire was just like the coolest one, and then like, do we have to do starters? Do I only have to like send no, no, no. Quil- like this, I just... this is like we're playing Pokemon victims, you know, the game or whatever, and it's like. This is your gym that I'm entering in, and you got like three fire mons, and and it could literally be whatever. I'll, okay, I'll even I'll pull up would, my my Pokedex if you need some help. Oh well, I would I would already do if I only could have three. I already know that I have to do like, let's see, what should I do? Charizard, obviously. So Charizard Typhlosion. would probably be your last one that you would throw out. Yeah, mm-hmm. Typhlosion. Oh, okay. And ooh, I gotta think. Oh, Blaziken. Yeah, Blaziken. Okay. Honestly. You're like, do I have to I know do it's starters? Like weird. And you did all starters. <laughs> that, that okay. You're, I I meant like Cyndaquil, and did I have oh, to do okay. like the yeah. the no, first um, evolutions of them? Yeah, but. I would always choose, like, I wouldn't always choose Fire. I would just, especially in the first couple games, like, they didn't make as many Fire Mons, so I felt like I almost had to choose a Fire Starter, um, just because it wasn't like, I'll just throw my old rod into the water and I can pull seven different kinds or walk through the grass and get a bunch of different grass mons. Like, there's not really yeah, no, designated I got you. F- fire areas for that. Let's see, fire Pokemon. Now I gotta look. <laughs> what would yours be though? Oh, if I was doing like my own gym. Um, mm-hmm. So, so in my <laughs> so I just played through uh, Pokemon Sword, which is for the Switch, and I think okay. I would either have a dark gym or a electric gym. Um, so I would probably have like for for pokemon off the top of my head i would probably i really love i think it's in, i think lantern is in gen 2 so lantern is that like uh water oh, yeah, and like, yeah. electric one so i probably have a lantern an electabuzz because i uh, electa I, yeah yep yeah. do you do you know about electabuzz's ridiculous cry in the the anime I don't. I know he has like this superpower okay. uh, that makes him super strong, but I'm gonna. I'm again, just gonna been a, quickly. Been, been a minute. I'm gonna just quickly play his cry because I. I kid you not. This is what his cry sounds like in the TV show. Can you hear this? Yeah. Okay. One sec. He's like. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was his cry. <laughs> what the hell? I, I have to imagine uh, some voice actor is like into him. mic going, <laughs> <laughs> just freaking out. Um, okay, so, so going back, Electabuzz, Lantern. And uh, maybe a Kling Clang. So Kling Clang is from Gen 5. And it literally, that evolution line is like so stupid. Because it literally is this gear that starts in its Kling. And then it evolves into Clang, which is a bigger gear. 
and then cling clang is like both gears combined <laughs> what the yeah it's the it's it's a it's like so it'd almost be a meme pick for me okay i was gonna say i don't know if that's gonna win you <laughs> much but i'm i'm in like the middle of the game i'm not like the eighth gym leader or the first i'm kind of like third or fourth i think with that lineup I totally forgot to add Ente. That's that I should have should have had Ente. Okay, in there. so you're gonna have all the badass fire starters. He, pretty and... much, that's like impossible <laughs> and, to Ente. like get past. Yeah, you're you're the rival <laughs> in the game that that just at the very end, just like oh, here's all these ridiculous mons that I have. That's ridiculous. And and you gotta beat me with your shinies. <laughs> <laughs> shinies only. Um, so in addition to the Pokemon shirt, you did a. Yu-Gi-Oh shirt as well. I saw. We did. We did three, uh, three of them. Or you did four, three maybe. Yogi, Yu-Gi-Oh shirts. We literally okay. We. I saw the pot I of green one. Not, and I was like, that's really fun. Yeah. I kid you not. We have printed like four hundred designs. <laughs> wow. I, okay. I'm. I am almost not kidding you. Let me. I'm gonna. I, that this picture I will find sooner. But we did pot of weed. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, the pot of weed, <laughs> and then we did. Um, it was uh, Lugia, Dark Lugia, versus. Um, why can I not think of? Or we did Raw versus or Exodia, but then we also did Slifer. We did that one too. Yeah, That's... we've done like five actually. I feel like wow, th- my memory is even going with how many things <laughs> we've done at this point. That's crazy. Hold on. Let's see. And this is not even the updated picture. I posted this last year and someone's like, wow, I never knew you did all these designs. And I was thinking to myself, wow, neither did I. Right. <laughs> You're like, oh, right. Until, until I like finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get all the designs because I keep every piece of merch that we have. Mm-hmm. I keep one thing. I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to get a picture of it all. And I thought, oh, that's it shouldn't be that difficult. And then on. You have to shoot this it is, from the top. This of... is Oh my. Yeah, you need this a fisheye lens current. for that. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, that was that was my friend or a vocalist's house before he moved. Mm-hmm. His whole living room. <laughs> or like dining room, whatever it sure. was. That's so there crazy. was nothing in there. Yeah. And Take all these tables out. Um, this is just for the shirts today. <laughs> pretty much. No, it was. I was like, I need to get a picture. And that's not even including like flags or anything specialty. That was just like clothing. Yeah, that is so crazy. <laughs> yeah, because you you guys have done uh, like you're really on your merch game. That's really the the moral of, of the story. The right? moral of the story. Uh, <laughs> Victims is just a legitimately clothing brand now. When they said, uh, what was it? An Ida... Not an idolize. What was the term? I remember someone's like, uh, bands are just like a, a blank and blank merch store. It's oh, like, okay. but actually, but actually. <laughs> well, honestly, like, you know, you look at a band maybe similar in your guys' space to a degree, like counterparts, where that band has grown as a brand as well and is really on their merch game and is very intentional about like, the designs and the consistency between things and, and different things like that. Um, cause, cause sometimes it could be jarring if a band is just like, here's, you know, this series of shirts and it's so different from the last thing or, or whatever, like some kind, sometimes that can't work, but you know, planning those things out, um, and, and keeping things limited is, is how, you know, you've clearly, it's not like you've done 400 different types of shirts be, just for shits and gigs. Like, you still have to print those and you know pay for all that and it's, all those things. It's a lot of work. It's honestly doing the merch has been mm, probably on par with how the music has been yes. and just so frequent. And I've I've shipped out every piece of merch we've ever done myself. Um, so it, it definitely got overwhelming. And doing this last year without having any touring and and being able to do like a limited spread for the tour Mm -hmm. and only having to plan a new drop, like every two to three weeks, a lot to keep up with. Absolutely. And, um, but it was the only reason why we were able to do what we were able to do. Mm -hmm. And that's just track a record 
and do music videos and and do these things in my opinion the more like proper way and like advertise just a little bit and this and that so like without the merch we probably wouldn't wouldn't be able to afford the band we want to be yes yeah and i and i think <laughs> like i i've talked about this before and and maybe i can't speak on it much cuz i'm not in like some of these other genre worlds but to me it feels like diy music has not slowed down at all like there there's definitely like i know there are certain albums that bands are just like waiting for that chance that's closer to showtime where they can you know like play on it but i know like that's going to be a very noisy and busy space when it's like if if the cdc was like worldwide people can play shows i know 10 insane albums would all get dropped that monday or that tuesday or whatever and it it's just gonna be too much and that's why i'm kind of glad that i'm like i decided it was like last november that we're gonna drop this album in in summer and i'm like you know there's a good chance we might not be able to play shows but there's also like a 50 50 shot at least we'll be able to play something in the fall that was kind of my head like where my head was at so I'm like, rather than drop an album where there's going to be quarter three and four, there's going to be ridiculous albums being dropped. Mm-hmm. Um, rather than kind of force our way in at the end of the year, like everybody else is going to do. I was like, you know, we're going to do it. I think it's quarter two technically is when the album's dropping. It could be three, but I don't know exactly. Mm-hmm. Either way, I was like, I don't want a bunch of bands dropping it in the same week. And then your album kind of gets forgotten. Yes, like, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, there's going to be a lot of competition for all the big bands and then all the small bands that will kind of just get left in the duds, unfortunately. Yeah. And as a small band, you have to plan for that almost like mm-hmm. you can't, it, it always kind of like, rubs me the wrong way when the small band thinks that they're going to have this like record breaking release and this and that. And it's like, sure you might, but I don't know if I really want to compete with Beartooth <laughs> or like <laughs> compete with Gojira or compete with sure, like yeah. this band. And it's like, I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. And for those reasons, I'm going to just do it a little bit earlier. And, and you know, some people need a little bit of time to like chew on the album a little bit, learn the words so that when show like you do play that first show, it's like, yeah, I've been listening to this for two months, three months or whatever it is. Um, so, uh, Meredith, we're going to take a little bit of a, a, a topic turn, um, cause we've been going okay. for over an hour here. Um, and, and, you know, this was kind of interesting cause like, you know, victims coming on my radar in, in little small ways through different music things and things like that. It was only that I kind of got to see a little bit of, more about who you are and, you know, how you carry yourself, uh, through a video that you made kind of recently. Um, so, you know, and you're pretty open about the, the fact that you have, um, that you have CF and you made this video, um, that really just like kind of like spoke to me in, in certain ways and just made me like kind of open up and may being the awareness month of that. I thought it would, you know, obviously you're a really rad individual with a bunch of different cool interests. Uh, and I've been enjoying the chats, but I would love if we can kind of touch on that a little bit more. Yeah. So, you know, for the folks that might not know what, um, uh, and, and, and apologize if I butcher this, um, cystic fibrosis, is that the correct thing? You're getting the the light on. Is that light going to help or is it not going to help? Well, it's very bright. (laughs) Can you turn? It's not helping. Well, can you turn your video? I know what I, I know what I'm going to do. Okay. One second. Okay. (laughs) This is, this has been the jumping off and jumping back on podcast with Meredith and Pokemon and. It's all about lighting. It's (laughs) It's getting dark. Yeah. There we go. It's getting dark here. So, but I know that you're an hour ahead of me, so. It's good now, but. My. It's. uh, my, oh, I heard that the sunset's gonna set it. I don't. <laughs> I don't know why my uh, my f- Siri was listening to me in the middle of my podcast. Um, oh, what the? Well, yeah, that's to be expected. I don't know. Um, but anyways, we're we're getting a little off topic. So, um, 
so you have what's called cystic fibrosis and um yes at, at least at the time when you know you made your video kind of talking about that that's not something that i was at all familiar with and um you know re like you know it being the awareness month and you doing that video that brought awareness of that to me so i would like to kind of pay that forward and you know give you a little bit of, of a platform on this podcast to talk about that as much or as little as you want to. So for anyone that's l hearing that for the very first time, can you just essentially give a, like a very caveman, like very bare bones explanation of, of what that is? Yeah, of course. So cystic fibrosis is where, um, an excessive amount <clears throat> of mucus like builds in your chest, your pancreas, and like most of the organs in your body. And when that happens, um, if it like pushes the threshold, it could hit like an infection and then you'd have to go to the hospital to do a bunch of, bunch of different like breathing medications to kind of get that out. Okay. But this mucus is like sticky and it blocks airways. So it makes it very hard to breathe. Mm. Um, and they compare it to breathing through a straw essentially. So I'll never like, not never. I mean, hopefully there'll be a cure, but as of right now, there is no cure and I won't be able to breathe or like function normally, like, like somebody with, with a full set of like healthy lungs. Sure. So people always compare it to asthma, but asthma is like very vastly different. Um, and with CF, the problem is there's so many different mutations that not, it's not like a one size fit all. Sure. Um, so I have to take breathing medications every day, two sets a day, which amounts to like 12 different breathing medications a day. Wow. And I okay. also have to take three to four pills with every meal to make sure my pancreas it, like is absorbing these enzymes. So my food is actually like absorbing this nutrients in its body. Mm. But I know other people that they have different strains that they don't have to do that. Okay. And um, it's just like the, the genetic code is, is different, but they don't have to take pills like I do and stuff like that. But then I also know people that have had like two different double lung transplants and oh, it's okay. gone to that like level. Mm. So not everybody's the same and it's just very hard to kind of like gauge who needs what. Right. And so I see, I see a specialist and I've been seeing the same doctor my whole entire life and stuff. And I have my friend who she's talked about like her lung transplants and how just difficult that has been. Mm. And I'm thankful I'm not on that level yet, but I felt like that's why I kind of need to talk about it because not, I, I never hear about CF. Like it's finally starting to like come up on TV shows. The first TV show I heard about it on was Degrassi, the oh, Canadian okay. show yeah. actually. Shout and out to Drake. <laughs> and then Bates Motel actually had the girl in it. The, like the main girl oh, really? was carrying okay. an oxygen tank. And that's true. Like some people have to be put on oxygen like due to CF. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, I, I even had to be fed through like a G tube because I was not absorbing any of my food like to the way that I should be. Mm -hmm. So I was always in like the one percentile of the weight. Like you wow. get someone, it's like, I think in ninth grade, I weighed like 65 pounds or not eighth grade, like 65 pounds or something like that. Okay. And I was only supposed to be like 4'11", but I'm actually five, five and a half. So it really just like, it depends, but it could really stunt your growth as well. And, mm. and you could have clubbing in your fingers, which I don't really have, but you could also develop diabetes. There's just a lot of things that come with CF. So sure. that's why it's so hard to like, you can't even compare your situation to someone else with CF because you might have like a similar situation, but it will never be the same. Sure. Like, and, and for anyone that is kind of learning about this for the very first time, like, you know, when you were, were you diagnosed when you were born or like, did they tell you like how rare this is in, in the overall like population of the world? I'm, I'm, I'm really curious on, you know, on those kind of stats. Um, I'm pretty sure there's like 200,000 ish people with CF. I could be wrong right. in that number, but it's very low. Sure. Like in the world. Yeah. Yeah. So that's in the billions it's a very, of people. Yeah. yeah it's it's very a very low. low number. And I was actually, I was born with it. 
most people I believe are born with it unless they find out later that they were born with it, but they didn't have to do all these like medications sure. like when they first mm-hmm. had, had to go. But at first they thought I had, um, they had, they thought I had something else. Uh, I was tested for another condition and they were going to actually take out one of my uh, kidneys. Mm. And had they have done that, I wouldn't have been alive. Oh, wow. Okay. So that's actually how I got to learn about, like, I met my doctor. His name's like Dr. Boas. And at first he didn't has, have his own specialty for CF. Mm. But he's like, that doesn't sound right. Like, test her for this. And yeah. I had actually got gotten tested when I was about six months old. And that's when I got officially diagnosed. But I was born sure. with the condition. Yeah. But thankfully, if it, if it wasn't for him, I, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been alive. Like literally, I've had when I was first born, I, I had like three surgeries. I had a uh, a feet like a, a a tube that was putting fluid from my brain to my nose, and yeah, like crazy stuff. Like if you see pictures of me, I have this like just tube sticking from my head like to here. Wow. And okay. uh, yeah, it's been my whole life. Yeah. Uh, essentially and i think now you know you look at me and i try to come off as like normal as possible and i think i did like an okay job growing up but now that i'm older it's just becoming more of like a responsibility that i had never thought it would be this this sure. extensive but yeah. i'm just i'm lucky to be like alive and i'm lucky to kind of still be able to have some somewhat functional lungs so yeah, yeah, and and I think the the reason you know I don't have CF myself, but the reason that I felt uh, like your video where you're talking about it resonated with me so much because a lot of the feelings that you were saying that you had felt like wanting like it's it's really hard on the physically it's very hard, but mentally it's it's very challenging as well because you realize that you're not invincible and you have this like handicap that's kind of set set against you. Um, I found a lot of uh, similarities with that with myself being diagnosed with Crohn's, like something I was, I guess, born with theoretically, but didn't really apply to my life or become a reality until like kind of like my, yeah. And yeah, it was only within my early 20s where I was like, these stomach pains are more than just stomach pains. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you know, struggling with that for years to get like a properly diagnosed and then B just get on the right medication to like, just be normal. And so a lot of the things that you were talking about were like, yeah, like it, like, and one of the questions I had is like, I think a lot of people can get, um, when they think about different like illnesses or diseases, they only think of it of, of something that they can see versus like something that is all happening on the inside. So yeah, has that been like kind of challenging for you to ex- either explain to people or like go through different hurdles where it's like, well, you look like n- a normal person to, to the, to a degree. So like, ha- has that been weird to kind of like, know like this is stuff that's happening inside of me that you can't theoretically see that makes sense yeah um so now i'm super transparent with it only because a uh you can't come in contact with someone else with cf because you can actually catch uh the bacteria in their lungs and it can make it worse for your condition oh, so that's okay. yeah so i started being more transparent because of that b people would smoke cigarettes and all this other things in front of me and i would have to ask like can that not happen and people are like looking at you like why are you making this inconvenient for me but and see it was just i now especially with covid i would cough like i cough a lot that's like one thing that kind of gives it away because mm. people are like oh do you smoke i'm like oh no i'm like i have cystic fibrosis i'm so like flat with it now i'm like no i have this and they're like no one really knows what it is so right. i'll be like oh i have a lung lung condition but with covid everyone's like, you have COVID, you know? And I almost have to like say it out loud. Like, no, like I, so that's like a huge reason why I started to be a little more transparent. And even at shows, people would like offer me hugs or like want to shake my hands. Mm. And I don't like shaking hands specifically because there's so many germs on them. Right. And, you know, you get sick on tour, you try to avoid that. Mm. But no, um, 
Hold on, reiterate the question. I'm going off topic, kind of. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. You you were kind of answering it in the sense of like, like th- there have definitely. Been oh, a lot is of it things. problems because you can't see the disease? Okay, yeah, it's no. not like I have this thing sticking out of my arm or my I have a skin irritation or like something like that. Like, it's- yeah, everyone just thinks I'm normal, mm-hmm. and no one really gives me any issues. But they're like, "Whoa, I never knew." Like usually that's just how how the conversations go and everything, but. Right. Like in school, um, I even had like a four, like a, a a five hundred two plan or something like that for school. So it's like you get special, like not privileges, but it's like, oh, why did you just get to leave in the bathroom and nobody else is allowed to? Things right. like that. Right. And I'm like, oh, well, like <laughs> I have this condition, I kind of need to go to the bathroom, you know. Right. But yeah, um, nothing super weird. But I think just having to explain every time now is just like, well, like especially with COVID, because I think I think most people, like including myself, like we would cough once, and they're like, like especially in those first months, they're like, "Do I have this like virus?" You know, that's going when they around. walk, they like go like this, they walk away from yeah. you, Ooh. like. Um, but yeah, now it's like I cough. I was like, no, I I actually just couldn't swallow for a second or whatever it is. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I couldn't have never even thought about that where like that is a part of your regular day to day, but now that's almost amplified in a weird aspect because of this pandemic. So yeah, that's very, that sucks, honestly. People look at you like you're an alien. <laughs> like, yeah. Don't touch me. <laughs> but, but you know, it, it's funny that you brought it up because if there's one thing that this pandemic changes our world in a good way is handshakes because I totally agree. I sh- hate hands shaking hands too. is gross as fuck like do the elbow bump or like salute or what, what literally <laughs> anything is better than literally just like and then it's like clammy i don't know i well, hate it well especially you know like i think you know my my dad is like a big business sales guy so he was always like you got to give a good handshake and now it's like no you don't like you could just be like yo what's up or or whatever it is like the head nod yeah the head the head nod behind the mask or whatever it is yeah <laughs> um yeah so um so i i know in the in the video that that you were talking about you know struggling with this with this for a lot of your life music was kind of your outlet to kind of like escape and and feel like you're making an impact and i i found a lot of like uh similarities for that for myself because it was only after i kind of had that sense of morality moment where it's like oh like i'm not like this person that can just live till i'm 100 years old and then kick the bucket um like to actually like do something with my life so that's very close to the around the around the time that I started doing scoped and and that is like a constant reminder for me to like you know like be able just to do things and to look back on my life and be like yeah like you know that that makes me happy because again like we don't really choose the cards that we're dealt in this life we just get to choose how we get to play with them so for you like I'm like has was there a moment where you had to kind of choose your health and your, you know, like overall well-being over music or, you know, you had to kind of, you were stuck between a rock and a hard place and you had to kind of uh, navigate that um, as as well with your band as well. Well, yeah, we started touring more excessively in like 2018. And I was doing it for like two to three weeks and I just didn't notice how hard touring were, was going to be on, on my body. And so as hard as it was meant, uh, like, or physically, it was, like, equally as bad mentally. So on tour, like, I would want to isolate or, like, I get irritated. And that's also, like, the side effects to my medication, unfortunately. Mm. So explaining that to your band members was a little harder, especially the ones when we had like a new member that I didn't know as long. Mm, So like, Oh, like, why are you kind of getting like irritated or why are you getting this and that? And like, it's like, not me, it's my medic medicine and how I'm feeling. And so it's very hard to kind of like open that discussion, Mm. um, to people that you don't really know. And so I've definitely run into those like complications where it's like, Oh, Meredith isn't a nice person or this and that. It's like, no, I just kind of need to be left alone and I need to isolate because if I'm not going to isolate, 
it will just become like this overwhelming thing for me. Whereas I'm almost like self-destructing mm, and then it's yeah. finally like peaking. It's like pouring out of me then, you know? Yeah. And, um, when we started really touring in 20, like 19, I had, um, it was the falsifier tour. Actually. I almost had to stop doing it. Like I got really sick. It was just one day. It was like humid in Kentucky. I was in the van all day, just like cool, trying to cool down and this and that. And I'm like, I guys, I, I don't know if I can continue doing this. And I had to like ask Tommy, who was the drummer of falsifier at the time, if you can maybe learn our songs and fill in. Now it's like me not being on that tour. I do everything. I don't drive, but like the van, like I helped for the van. I find us places to stay. I'm usually the, the TM. I talk like to the promoters. I like talk to everybody. Mm -hmm. So me not being there can go probably horribly wrong. And so I almost feel like there's this like immense pressure for me. If I'm not there, things won't get done. Sure. But I was, I was straight up. We had Illinois the next day and I wasn't going to come back. Mm. And I did my treatments all day. I was late to the show. Like I drove separately and, um, like I ended up being able to continue the tour, but there's so many times that on that, on these runs that I'm like, I'm not myself, I'm not doing well. And there's, I might have to go to the hospital when I come back home and being able to like, like telling people that it's like, you're almost like a Debbie downer. Yeah. So I almost prefer not to. So like, I'll try to like get away from everybody, but it just doesn't work, you know, in the way that you'd hoped. And yeah. I think eventually like I had kind of come up with a new solution, like, Hey, I'm not staying in dirty places anymore. I'm not doing this. Like if I need to shower, we're going to stop at a shower. It's not me trying to be like rude. Mm -hmm. It's like better for my health that way. And I can't have people like smoking in the van and this and that, like, yeah. There's just rules that I have to like set in place in order for me to continue doing it. And thankfully, like the members in, in my in the band now, we're very close now. Like all three of us, we've known each other for a good long while. And now ha we've done a bunch of tours together now. They're all pretty. Um, what was it? Pretty aware. And they will help me. Like if you see me not bring my drums up on stage or whatever, it's not because I'm a lazy bandmate. It's, it's, I, I physically can't do it. Right. I can't pick up. I'm like too tired after we play. And so they're, they're really helpful. And I don't know. I'm thankful for my bandmates for sure now. Mm -hmm. And we're more of like a family than anything. But yeah. like towards the beginning, um, and, and even 2019 before, you know, COVID happened, I was like, I can't keep doing this to my body in the ways that I have been. So when we do come back, I'm going to be kind of more picky on tours and I'm going to be more selective on what we're doing just because if it's not going to be worth it physically for me, I can't make, I can't like continuously just put my body through hell. Right. Um, even though I love playing music, like I, it's definitely why I continue feeling like I have a place here in existence, but it's also something that with touring now that I've kind of, you know, after COVID I've still learned to do musical things without touring. Mm. I know that that is still a thing that exists. Yes. So, absolutely. yeah. Um, like doing the merchant stuff was something that was like fun for me to do and something that like kept me going. So there's just this, a lot of things that I'm going to personally change when we continue like doing tours, which we are going to this year, but like even getting hotels more, not, not because we're, Oh, you know, I've done the sleep in the van thing. I've done it, but I think for everybody's sake, I'm going to just like get more hotels just yeah. because it's, it's probably best for everyone to get like a proper rest and to not subject yourself to possibly getting COVID again, even if you have the vaccine or getting the <laughs> flu or this and sure. that, you know? Yeah. And I think like, it, it's so easy for people to be like, no, that's not hardcore. You sleep on the person's floor and you get three hours of sleep and you do that th at night after night after night. And, and like some people can do that and they are in perfect health and that's totally fine. Like my band that I play in, 
like we're a newer band we've done no touring uh just played some local things here but i know that if we do anything a huge priority is being up front like yo i need to have access to a bathroom because if something if i have like an episode like i gotta hit that like i can't just like it, it's not as easy like i'm sorry if this is graphic for any listeners but it's not as easy for me to like hold it as like someone else oh, yeah, yeah yeah exactly and like there's <laughs> there's a plethora of other things outside of crohn's outside of cf where someone has like a mental illness where they they need to have a certain amount of time to like um you know like be mentally ready to play a show and like i think a lot of these things like people aren't talking about enough they're just like oh i miss shows but like not maybe being self-aware of like like some people are like, there's a lot of people that are actually just introverted people and they've enjoyed not having to be at all these ex extroverted outings for the last year and a bit. So obviously live music is a huge part of the DOA culture that we're a part of, but I think, you know, having these conversations about what people need and giving access to those things and being more empathetic is like for me at an, at an all time high. Oh, definitely. And I think after this pandemic, if people aren't more empathetic or like willing to listen, I don't know what you've been doing for the past <laughs> year and a half. Right. Um, I think I've learned <clears throat> like during this tra like transitional period, I want to call it, I've grown and I've like learned so much about myself that without this, I wouldn't have given myself that time. Mm. And I think it was very important for me to even continue this uh, and go as hard as like I want to be like going yeah, and doing this for like a, a longer amount of time than like breaking up or whatever. But just, I don't know. I, th I almost feel like the pandemic was a necessary evil, at least for me. I, I do miss like shows. I miss playing out. I miss my friends tremendously, but um, I finally think I'm like better at the appropriate headspace to start doing it again. Yeah. Whereas before I, I just ran my body completely to the ground hmm. um, to a point where I'm like, damn, uh, <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to pick, pick this back up. So, cause when yeah. that video, when I, when I released that video, cause I released it last year, actually, I had recorded last year. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't put it on. I didn't put it on my Instagram though. Um, oh, I see. Okay. But I put it, I like, I put it out there and I was 22 at the time and I'm, 24 right now so i'm turning 25 gotcha. so i that i was even i didn't even know what i was getting myself into in, in the touring sense and right. as we've grown okay um i've done a lot more touring since since that video hmm. so there's just more things that i feel like i could even talk in another video eventually sure and um i don't know i, I think it's it's cool being able to open up about things that that people go through because Music is not just this like, oh, two-sided thing, you know? Yes. I feel like it's multidimensional and uh, there's so much you can learn about people in, in like a positive aspect too. Mm -hmm. Like, wh what did I even learn? Like even with like the political stances and stuff this year, I feel like I've learned a lot more and had there been more distractions, maybe I wouldn't have learned uh, what I needed to know in, yeah, in my definitely. opinion. Yeah, so. I can, I can, uh, I'll echo, echo you there. Cause I think that there was things that people talk about at shows and you're like, yeah, like I agree with that. But now I feel like a you've lot, you've seen it, you've seen it and you've lit, like actually had time to be at home and listen to a two hour long podcast of someone talking about that. Like, yo, this shit has been going on for, for years and years and years and years. Like even all this stuff that's, that's happening on the other side of the world, like, like there, there literally is really nothing going on in most people's day to day to ignore that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, exactly. No one's going out on their vacation with their family. No one is doing this. Like, and eventually that will come back, and you know it, it'll be easier to be distracted. But I think I'll, I'll I I 100 percent want to echo you that if there's anything that I've learned, you know, during this pandemic is like the the necessary time that is needed to pause and like know that you don't know enough about something and spend time in that area versus just literally going on autopilot and just running yourself into the ground and then being like oh like i didn't have time like everyone's had time and and i agree with you if, if no one has 
spent time during this pandemic to be like self-aware and look at themselves in the mirror and, and think about the things that they want to change for the better and for their community. Like, like I don't even know what to say to you at that point. Uh, for, uh, for real, uh, like some people, I feel like they didn't even, I don't know, they didn't grow at all mm. and they didn't, they didn't like collect any knowledge and they've just been angry at the internet um, about things that sometimes don't matter. There's things that are, just way more important than uh what riff or whatever has been you know yeah. shitty today i don't right. know yeah no i i i totally agree and you know my i'm i, I try to be optimistic in thinking that a the community attendance wise will be that much better because i definitely saw people even in my own scenes who like i'll go to the regional festival but not every single like live show that i can get my hands on because for me as someone that was filming shows i was trying to get as much content as i could and i just love live music so i a i hope that is tenfold but b i hope that people are writing music and doing different things in their local scenes with all the all the lessons that they learned for sure yeah no i totally agree with you yeah so um meredith we can start to wrap up the show this has been a very fun like and informal podcast you know we've we've done every both sides of the pokemon. coin talking about pokemon. all the different pokemon and uh and all that stuff um no this has truly been a very informative and really fun episode and i am beyond excited for that new pokemon shirt that you're doing um dude when no is, I, this when is, is really that coming good up? uh honestly probably next month okay uh th this is what happens i kind of like when do I want to drop something? Like usually I do like every two to three weeks. Sure. But I guess it like it it really depends. Um, and then I kind of like how many items do I want to do? Like whatever. Yeah. I just I come up with all the ideas. My band doesn't really care. <laughs> they're not like I gotta do. Like yeah. I gotta have my input. Like I'll ask them, but they're like, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. You know, they're yeah. very nonchalant, and I'm like, cool. Which I mean, Pokemon is on it. Works for me. Oh yeah, that works. <laughs> Yeah, that works. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. As soon as that comes out, I'm definitely going to shoot a, a PayPal your way. And, and so I can rep that on the podcast. I, I I love that. Anything Pokemon related, I will wear 100%. That's me, dude. Hell yeah. Um. So the last portion of the show is a favorite Mosh story that you want to share. So that um. literally could be anything. That could be something that happened at a victim show. That could be something that you did. Something that happened to you. Whatever's the first thing off the top of your head is kind of how we end things well i'll do two because one's like not a mosh story but i think it's kind of funny okay. but the first story is uh when i was we played at the borg ward which is actually uh kingmaker's last show was at the borg ward i don't know if you're familiar but i had thrown a drumstick in the crowd but there was like nobody there like straight up there's like not there's like 10 10 like 17 people whatever okay <laughs> it somehow bounced off the floor and hit somebody in the eye and give him a black eye oh shit the ricochet yeah i've never <laughs> seen that happen ever i was like and i'm like oh my god i'm so sorry but mm. that happened and then Another mosh story, I feel like this is just, I was in the pit one time. This is why I don't really mosh, <laughs> legit. Uh, I was in the pit to a band called A Past Unknown. I'm pretty sure Deserters was on this show. Okay. Um, but this guy had swung on me like, bam, and I got a fractured jaw. Oh, shit. So I stopped. Uh, I I don't really go in the pit anymore because of yeah, that. that was, I'm like, well, that was the last we're of done. The Merms moshing days. No, yep and i was i was i was like 17 yeah i was like yeah never doing that again <laughs> <laughs> no no i i always appreciate multiple mosh stories so no i i love that and uh you know throwing the drumstick reminds me there would be certain like uh video games um specifically halo because that's what i grew up on where you could like shoot the ground with the sniper rifle and it would like ricochet <laughs> off yeah the floor so that's what i thought of immediately when you said that just like the unexpected <laughs> that's what happened i was i felt really bad too i was like 
Of course, like yeah. I somehow do, do that. So, like you're just throwing it to show, like literally the void, and you're like, oh, I actually hurt someone. <laughs> I thought it was the void. There's nobody out there, and then right. all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yeah. I guess it wasn't the void. Well, uh, Meredith, I'm really excited um, for anything new that's coming down the pipe with victims, and um, all the info for the band and your stuff will be in the show notes and the description of the video. But if there's anything that you want to plug, send the people off with. The floor is yours. For whatever you got uh new album drops july 9th of 2021 called volume four and i'm the ache uh, okay. also the scoped podcast is awesome my Hell boy yeah. spencer here has it's been a been a real pleasure and y- y'all gotta make sure you uh stay hydrated <laughs> 100 percent yeah drink <laughs> drink that water drink that liquid death drink some new level if you're not new wanting level. to be hydrated creamsicle bro creamsicle <laughs> yeah if 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 you guys ever do come back to calgary we'll uh we'll hook you guys up with some new level for sure hell yeah no i that sounds interesting i don't normally like beer but i feel like sours are good yes but- yeah, no, these so. guys are on their sour game. So, yeah, we'll, we'll hook you up. Don't, no worries. Hell yeah.